everybody, and welcome back to The Big Family Homestead. I am here with a channel that many of you know, some of you do not. Some of you may need to get reacquainted with Tommy over at the Off Grid Nation. How are you doing, Tommy? Hey, oh, <laughs> what's up, Brad? I, this uh, is different. This I know is a little it's weird, different. Man. It, it, it feels familiar, but it feels strange all at the same time. Kind of like a new pair of underwear. Uh, sort of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, here's the scoop. Um, we've kind of been doing the Homestead Nation together for a long time where we had been interviewing other people. So today I wanted to actually introduce you to a lot of my new subs that may not know of Tommy over at the Off Grid Nation. And so today, that's kind of what we're going to do. I wanted to basically... Okay, man, here it is. What's the 411 on the channel? Because you've gotten through a lot of changes lately, a name change and a kind of a more of a, an, a vibe change a little bit. So give me the 411 and let's get into this. Well, um, hi, new subs or new potential subs, by the way. Uh, yeah, you guys probably know me or have seen me on uh, Brad's channel or some of the stuff we do on the Homestead Nation. And I'll, I want to start from the beginning, Brad, if that's okay. Yeah. All right, so started my channel uh, January 4th, 2015, because I just wanted to kind of uh, have a videography of my cabin that I'm building out in the woods and my off-grid stuff. And my name was Carolina Prepper at the time, and uh, I was big into preparedness. You reached out to me in May of 2015, and we started talking. And we, we both had similar thought processes, and we said, hey, you know what's lacking in this, in, in this community is community. We're all kind of lone wolves doing our own thing to one degree or another. Let's see if we can bring people together. So we started the Homestead Nation channel and met a whole bunch of folks, and it's been a great experience. Um, and we want to keep doing that. But since then, like recently, I decided, you know what, I'm kind of moving beyond the prepper phase, and I want to reach a larger audience and get in front of more people. And I'm moving more the homestead route or off-grid route, so I just changed the name to Off-Grid Nation. And... Even more recently, I've kind of been bitten by this uh, uh, thing that's going on out in Oregon or was going on. I'm not going to say it's over because I don't think it is, but I started getting more into the activist side of things from that perspective, from a liberty freedom perspective. And I've had a renewed kind of push um, for getting the word out from a liberty perspective and from a preparedness perspective. And I'm launching a new series on my channel. Uh, that kind of brings you through prepping 101, and we're going to move into a little more advanced stages in the in the future videos. So the feedback has been awesome. Uh, the the response from the subs have been awesome. And I got to tell you, last night my wife and kids were out of town for two nights um, down in Savannah, and I was all by my lonesome, just me and the two pups. And I decided to get on and do a, a just just a live shot, uh, a live stream, because I've kind of I've kind of grown to feel feel these people in the community are more my friends and my family. So it's been a great experience all the way around. So now, having checked out a lot of your new vibe videos, there is a there's a definite there's a definite shift. And uh, can you attribute yeah, um, attribute that shift to any one thing, or is it just a combo of things that have happened in the last few months? Well. Yeah. You know through conversations we've had both on and off air that this is uh, th this thing that I'm feeling, this thing that you're feeling, it's, it, it's a calling from a higher power. Call it what you will. Um, I've gotten some pushback from people saying, hey, keep your head down, get off the political stuff, just show me off-grid stuff. And I don't want to be the guy to be out front waving a flag. That's not me. In fact, more often than not, I, I like to be the guy behind the guy. And uh, I, don't, I don't like to be out front, but there's something pushing, pulling, uh, moving, guiding me to get out front and talk. So, yeah, the Oregon thing was a big deal to me, even though I've had those feelings prior to. This was a big movement that's going on in our country. Um, but also, when you look out across the landscape, and I know we've all heard this a million times, things are weird and getting weirder. But they really are getting weirder at a breakneck pace right now. At least that's the way it seems to me. Um, the more I see, the more it concerns me, the more I think that things are uh, ready to happen sooner rather than later. So I'm having this push, this feeling, uh, this, this urgency from the higher power to get out the message, get out the word. And, and thankfully, and this, this is what makes it all worthwhile, because you know we're not doing this for money. You don't get paid enough money to make this uh, worth the time invested or the money that you invest in it. Um, I'm doing it. For this reason, and I've had several people in the last, you know, week and a half, two weeks get back to me and say, thank you so much. Your videos is what woke me up. 
Uh, I had one sub say that, you know, my son has been telling me for years to get prepared and I always thought he was a little nuts. But since I've been watching you, I realize that's what I need to do. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm d doubling down and I'm getting the things that I need to get. Thanks so much. So that's what makes it all worthwhile. And the way I think of it, Brad, is if, if your video can reach one person or my video can reach one person, uh, we won. If we can reach five people, even better. If one of those five people goes out and starts a channel and starts putting up content that could reach one or five more people, it's going to spread like wildfire. And from a selfish perspective, and I said this in a video that I did recently, um, the more people that I can personally reach and wake up, the less people I got to consider a threat when the time comes, because they're going to have their ducks in a row and they're not going to come looking for me and my stuff. So that's the only selfish perspective I can think of when I think about why am I doing this? Because sometimes I question that. Why am I doing this? And the only thing I can come back to is there's just this uh, divine intervention that's pushing me to do it. Wow, you know, uh, you and I have both, since I've known you, we've been a, um, a well, a voice of community, community building, yep. making sure that we're going and growing this body of people in a way that's going to educate, inform, entertain, and, and move everybody forward in preparedness, homesteading, the whole nine yards. Now, tell me what's new, this revitalized off-grid nation, because I've noticed, just looking through the co uh, you know, comment section, there's a different kind of vibe going on over there, and I think people are, are catching that bug that you have, and I think they're wanting to share, and, and I, I want to tag this question just a little bit, because it seems to me in the past, you're right, we have all been a bunch of lone wolves out there, disconnected, and I think people, when they hear folks like you and me going, no, 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 we've got to get this together, we've got to build you know, a family, if you will, and they're going, okay, no toe in the water, but now it seems like there's a lot more fuel on the fire. Talk to me a little bit about that, because I'm seeing people jump out, say things, you know, that they, they would not have done a year ago. Um, I, I don't know that I can put my finger on that. It's just a feeling in the air. And obviously, I'm not the only guy feeling it. Um, I think a lot of people are feeling it. But I'm one of the guys, and there's plenty of us out there that are willing to push forward and pick up that flag, even though, you know, you may or may not be comfortable with it. What I'm seeing, and this is awesome, is some channels that have been around for a long time, um, and, and, and not a long time, some, some newer channels, that were not very comfortable coming out and giving their views on things, they keep it pretty plain Jane and Vanilla, are now pushing through and saying, I don't care anymore. Because my feeling on this, in, in, uh, in my mother, I'll go back to my mother, my mom always tells me, keep your head down, don't make any waves, stay under the radar, you know, all the things that we hear people say, yeah, we know things are weird, but stay quiet. You know, my mother's an old Italian woman, and the old Italians back in the old neighborhood used to say, I don't see nothing. You know, when the police showed up, they all of a sudden, none of them could speak English. <laughs> and <clears throat> that's, been, that's been kind of the mantra of not everybody in that uh, age group or that demographic, but a lot of them. Just, just keep your head down and, and you'll be okay. But I'm finding I can't do that. Matter of fact, I get a little upset when I hear that mantra um, because I feel as though that's the attitude that's gotten us into the position we're in in this country. Uh, just keep the status quo, be apathetic, things will get better, you can vote for a new president and that'll change everything. And what I'm realizing through this awakening process that I've been on for you know five or six years now is that that doesn't work, in my opinion. And by the way, everything I say is my opinion and everybody's got an opinion and you know what they say about those. But in my opinion, you can't be apathetic anymore. Um, you can't sit back and not say anything because things aren't getting better, they're getting worse. And I don't care who you vote for in this next election, Whomever gets in there is not going to change the uh, state of the country. We can't vote for it. It's not going to be a top-down thing. This is a bottom-up thing. Uh, this is a grassroots thing. We need to all band together and get on board, put our petty differences aside. I don't care if your black lives matter or blue lives matter or all lives matter. We all need to kind of join hands here and realize, realize who the real devil is here. And we need to push against that. And you know what? There'll be plenty of time after the fact, if we're successful, where we can all duke it out uh, after the fact. But right now, we need to put all those differences aside. And, and so that's the message I'm trying to share with people. And I'm getting an overwhelming yes. That's exactly what we need. And people are picking up on the vibe. And again, I'm not the only guy saying it. And I don't want to be any leader of any group. Um, 
but I am feeling this push to, to just speak out. And I actually have had a couple of things happen that were funny in the last 24 hours. One of the people that watched one of my recent videos um, actually said that I was an ISIS terrorist. So, um, so I had that. And then I had another how guy that I- How you cut off this week? Say again? How many heads have you cut off this week? Only four, but still, I, I, I think it's a minimum of eight before you're considered. Yeah, they, they get the card. You're a card yeah. carrying member. They, get, yeah. they issue you the card. <laughs> um, but I actually had another guy that I think is subbed to my channel, and he said, you know, calm it down. You can't, you can't be – basically, the basic tone of it was um, stay under the radar. Don't be so pushy. Stay off the political stuff. And – I'm like, man, you're free to watch or not watch thumbs up or thumbs down, but uh, I, I don't have much control over what I'm saying now, and I believe that. I don't have much control over what I'm saying now because I'm being pushed to say it. The only reason why I could think of that is because this mouth, for whatever reason, can put together a somewhat coherent sentence and maybe inspire somebody or something to, to help you know, move the ball forward. So, uh, you know, we're all vessels. We're all put here for a reason. God has a plan for all of us. And interestingly enough, I was at my son's basketball game on Saturday and it's a Christian league. And the halftime message uh, was exactly that, where the gentleman got up in front of everybody and said, you know, each of us are here for a reason. God puts all of you here for a reason. And, you know, your talents might not be the same as somebody else's, but uh, God gives you talents and he wants you to use them in a way that he, he, he guides you to use them. And I was like, wow, it's exactly what's going on right now. It's exactly what's happening to me in my life. And I don't know about you. I've had that conversation with God and I'm not a Bible thumper people. And if you are, that's great. And if you're not, that's great, whatever. Um, I normally don't talk about my faith or God or that sort of thing. Um, just because it's, it, for whatever reason, it's pretty divisive. Um, and I'm not looking to be divisive. I'm looking to, to unite to the best of my ability. But um, I do feel as though I'm put here for a reason and I've had that conversation with God and I never got an answer until recently. And now I feel like I know why I'm here for what it's worth. Well, now let's, let's take this a, a few light step, light year steps backwards. And I just realized that maybe some of these folks who might be watching this video don't even know what a prepper is. What oh. is a prepper and why it, why is it something that we should be concerned about? Well, um, what is a prepper? I think I think what preppers have been uh, deemed in the media or the mainstream or, you know, these crazy tinfoil hat wearing nut jobs that, you know, think doomsday is around the corner at every uh, every corner in the world's going to end. And yes, there are some people out there that probably fit, fit that bill. Um, I think a prepper is somebody that can look around them and see potential risks and they try to make preparations to mitigate those risks to the best of their ability. For instance, um, most of us should have a little extra water in the fridge or some extra food on the shelf, right? I hope you don't go to the market each and every day and consume every ounce of what you buy only to wake up the next day hoping that the market's open because if it's not or if there's incle inclement weather, you're in trouble and you're gonna go hungry. So I hope most of us have prepared with enough food and or water or liquid in our house to where we can get through a few days. Um, if you're from northern climates and you have snow, um, chances are you have a box in your trunk. If not, you should. And it should have jumper cables and a blanket and a flashlight and a tire iron and all the things that might need to get you a know, shovel, all the things that might need to get you out of a snowbank. Because if you haven't been in one, you will be. Um, so you're preparing for that um, eventuality. You're preparing for that uh, thing that may happen. So. I think people that consider themselves preppers take that and just kind of extrapolate that out. And they, they say, okay, well, we need to prepare for this potential scenario or that potential scenario. And yes, it can be a disease, okay? I can speak from experience. You can get so wound up in this that you're preparing for eventualities that you know have a one one hundredth of 1% chance of happening. So I try to be a practical prepper. I try to look out over the landscape and I try to be pragmatic about it. And I look at what are the real potentials for things to happen. And I try to prepare for the biggest things that I think will happen. If an asteroid's gonna hit the earth, I ain't preparing for that, Brad. If it happens, it happens, and chances are I'm gonna be dead. If there's a nuclear war and Russia launches all their, all their nukes at us and we launch all ours at them, chances are I'm not gonna be around to see the next day. Um, but I'm trying to prepare for the economic collapse that I believe is happening now and I'm trying to prepare for, you know, just weather incidents. I mean, look at uh, um, Hurricane Sandy that hit the Northeast or Hurricane Katrina that hit the Gulf Coast. 
these things happen every year. Um, earthquakes are, are happening with increased um, frequencies. Uh, tornadoes. The so weather is getting crazy. So those are the things I'm trying to prepare for. So now, if I could sum up that definition uh, of a prepper, I would say, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're basically saying a person who actually uses their brain to think. <laughs> and and I, I, I mean that. I mean that because the reality is, look, people, we buy homeowners insurance, we buy renters insurance, we buy insurance for this and that and that and that and that. And then, then we look at people that store some food up and go, man, you're crazy. Wait a minute. I need that. I need food. I need water to live. And now we're crazy just because the media brands you a certain way. And I, I personally think it's a bunch of horse you know, manure, but it also doesn't help that Nat Geo finds the craziest nut bars in the drawer. And they're like, this is what a prepper is, guys. Here they are. Right. Well, well, <laughs> you know, so to me, it's just absolutely nutty. Yeah, and I think I think those shows do as much harm as they do good. Now, you know, you can get good and bad from anything, right? The internet is a great thing, but it can also be a pretty uh, pretty big weapon if if somebody wants to use it as one. So, uh, same thing with that show. It showed me some things that helped wake me up before I even considered myself a prepper. Um, in some respects, it helped make it a little more mainstream, and I think that was a good thing. But it definitely, for the people that didn't want to know better and for the people that want to keep their head buried in the sand, they look at it from the other side and say, oh, those people are crazy. I'm not going to be one of those. So, Well, now let's talk a little bit about some of the aspects of your channel that are the off-grid aspects. A lot of people know that you do have some property and you're, you're taking yeah. this to the next level. Tell me, what is this off-grid aspect that you have going on? Yeah, so, um, and, and again, I'll, I'll go back to a, to a person's comment that I had recently because they saw some of my videos about me talking about things getting bad, and he wrote, by the name, by the way, this guy's name was Adolf Hitler, and he had a picture of Adolf Hitler, but he spelled Adolf wrong. So take anything this I guy says that, with a grain of salt. That guy has been on my channel, too, and, and uh, <laughs> let's just say that I was less than uh, genial in, in his uh, <laughs> nastiness. Well, you know, take, take what he says with a grain of salt, but I'm going to use his comment. He basically said, you know, if you think the stuff's going to hit the fan, why are you even bothering with this? And I was like, you know, I didn't even answer him, but I let some, I let one of my other subs answer, answer him. That's exactly the reason why I'm doing this, is because <laughs> I do believe the stuff is going to hit the fan. So <clears throat> thankfully, I was in a financial position where I put aside enough money where I can go out and I bought a relatively inexpensive piece of land. I got 32 acres, about an hour and change from where I live. And it has a pond that's about two acres and I stocked the pond and I put a shed back there um, that's 12 by 20. And it was just a shell and I insulated it and started work, you know, put carpet in there, put a sink, put some water, running water, put a composting toilet. And I, I have a place that I can stay that's warm, that's safe, that's nice. I built a, a screened in deck on the outside. I put a bunch of improvements, got a shipping container um, uh, to, to store my stuff and got a tractor. And I'm really working at improving the property. And this year is gonna be a huge year for me. I'm putting in a garden and I think I'm, I'm going the uh, back to Eden method based on some movies that I've seen. I know there's a ton of methods out there and a lot of people got their own spin on it. The one that seemed to make the most sense for my situation was back to, back to Eden. Because I don't live there, because I'm not going to be able to water it on a daily basis. And down here in the southeast, man, especially in a drought year, you have to water these things every day or they die. Back to Eden seems to be like it's going to be the least amount of maintenance, uh, most bang for my buck, so to speak. So that's going to be big. I'm putting in a beehive this year. I got the hive back there. It's positioned. I'm waiting for my nook. Um, I called the guy uh, a couple days ago and it's, he said, as soon as we get 60 degrees or over, uh, you can come down, I'll crack open the hive and you'll get your nook. So that hopefully is happening next week. We'll be in the 70s, which is crazy because it's freezing now. Uh, we're under a winter, uh, winter storm weather advisory. The kids had the day off from school yesterday. They most likely will tomorrow. And next week it's going to be like 75. So um, big things happening and I'm getting a ton of inspiration, a ton of great ideas from uh, the subscribers. And, and that's what I mean. And I know you know what I'm talking about. It really is a community now. And maybe it was there before I got there. Maybe it was there before you got there. But I know the people that are on my channel, 99% of them are just awesome people willing to help out, exchange phone numbers, exchange emails, have phone conversations. So it's it's been a blessing across the board. So it's kind of interesting, you know, as you were chatting there, I was thinking about, um, you know, 
let's look at this from a practical standpoint. If you're, if you're going to be a prepper or a homesteader or some degree of a self-reliant person's life, if you're going to try to emulate that kind of life and bring it home for you, you know, it, I, I just keep thinking, you know, it's kind of like this. What if I'm wrong? Well, who cares? Then you got a lot of extra food. You've got a lot of extra skills. You've got a lot of um, ability to do things on your own that you would not have normally um, gotten had you not taken that path of a more self-reliant life. So on one path, let's just say that nothing ever happens. Let's just go poof, nothing ever happens. Everything goes on just the way it always was. Well, you probably ended up saving a ton of money, probably ended up with better relationships with your family and your friends, probably learned a ton of skills that you never would have had if you kept off on this path. But now take a look at this side of things. If you went that way and something does happen, you're hosed. Yeah. So to me, it's an absolute no brainer. And so kind of as we, as we wind this up, I want you to give your best pitch because folks, if you don't know Tommy's channel, I'll tell you what, here's the deal. He is a driven guy. He, he will say things absolutely bluntly. So if you, if you got a little thin skin, you might want to put on a jacket because sometimes he'll, he'll get there, but I'll tell you what, I have yet to find uh, anything that I go, you know what, he's just flat out wrong. I may not like the way he delivers things sometimes just because he's very direct. I just got to be honest. See, like that. Just like that. He just stuck his tongue out at me. But um, <laughs> but but the bottom line is you got to come at this with an open mind. And I and I would encourage you to go over to the Off Grid Nation uh, channel. Check him out. Give him five minutes. And then if five minutes becomes ten, I guarantee you, you're going to start thinking of things that you may not have ever thought um were acceptable in terms of the social norms because there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the political world uh, that frankly most of us really do not want to think about because it cha it changes your whole paradigm on everything and so if you've got the guts to do it I'd, I'd suggest go on over to Tommy's channel check it out now now there's my pitch Man. where's your pitch well, you got the guts. You make it sound like they're going to run through a firing squad. No, seriously. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> seriously, I, I, I do kind of put it out there. I don't pull a lot of punches. I, I try to be fam family friendly, and I succeed 98% of the time. Every once in a while, I let a naughty four-letter word slip out. But I'm, I'm cognizant of the fact that even though – I speak like a truck driver sometimes off camera. On camera, I don't want – I want you to be able to show this to your kids um, because having your family on board is super important. Having people rowing in the same direction is, is super important. Brad hit the nail on the head. There's two ways you can go in life, um, it, two, two main roads. You can go the preparedness route or, or just, you know, the non-prepared route. And I am, I'm 100% in agreement with them. I think you're going to have better relationships. You're going to have – uh, better health through better food and better skills. It's, it's save, save money. It's an awesome way to go. But those are the people that are on Brad's channel and you're just gardeners. I don't just do gardening. I'm going to do some gardening and I would love to have people that know what the heck they're talking about to help me through that. Um, if you're just into cooking, I don't do a whole lot of cooking videos. Um, oh, you do. But I'm going to be doing more cooking videos off grid. Sinister sausage gravy. That was classic. Sinister it, sausage it, gravy. I did do one, but that, that's about all I know how to cook. But, you know, I'll be doing more cooking videos and stuff from an off grid perspective without you. You know, I'm going to be doing campfire cooking, that sort of thing. So, um, but if you're interested in maybe learning a little bit more about what's going on out in the world, geopolitically, financially speaking, um, that's, that's where you might pick up something that you're not going to pick up, you know, from, say, Brad's channel. Um, so there's a lot of different opinions out there. I'm just one guy with one opinion. If you're interested in hearing what I have to say and joining in, I want you to come over. If not, I get it. That's cool too. But hopefully we see you over there. All right, guys. So there you have it. Uh, I'm Brad and this is Tommy off grid nation. Check it out. I know you guys, uh, I know you guys are going to enjoy a lot of what he's got to say. And I'm, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that there's going to be a lot of people that are just going to jump right in and become part of that community too, bro. So keep up the good work. Rock on. Awesome. Thanks. You too, buddy. See ya.